So it has been more than two months now since that bombshell report from Attorney General Letitia James after her investigation found that former Governor Andrew Cuomo had sexually harassed almost a dozen women. It's a report that eventually led to his resignation. And that report came during impeachment inquiry, which still hasn't released a report to the public about what it found. And the governor's personal attorney, Rita Glavin, spent part of today demanding that the report essentially get redone, claiming that it was political because A.G. Letitia James' potential run for governor. Because of the glaring deficiencies and flaws in that report, which extraordinarily prejudiced the governor, ousted him from office, overturned an election, and disenfranchised the votes of 3.6 million New Yorkers. It has to be corrected. And joining us live right now is Bernadette Hogan. She covers Albany for the New York Post and has been reporting on this story for quite a while now and is kind enough to come back on the show and help guide us through this. Bernadette, thanks for your time. Of course, thank you for having me. It's always good to see you, Bernadette, and we've heard a lot of these refrains from the governor's attorney before. So what is the basis for her asking for what essentially amounts to a whole new investigation, and does that seem like something that's likely to happen? It does not seem like something that's likely to happen, to answer your second question first. But so the former governor's attorney, Rita Glavin, held a press conference today for the first time in a couple months. However, it hasn't, it's not the first time that we've heard from her since the former governor resigned. And what she was demanding was a, a reassessment, an amendment of Attorney General Letitia James' bombshell sexual harassment report that was released on August 3rd that led to the eventual resignation of former Governor Andrew Cuomo. Now, Glavin, along with the former governor, as well as um, some of the few standing allies that the former governor still has, have been repeatedly attacking the results of this report, um, especially in recent weeks, as there has been a number of polls coming out um, with Letitia James's name raised as a potential candidate to run for governor. And one of the reasons they want this report amended is because they think, they, they continue to argue that Cuomo did not get a fair shake in all of this. They say that the 11 women that were named in this, um, in this report, that the report again concluded Governor Cuomo sexually harassed them. They say that that's not really the case. And they're arguing um, some of the fine details saying, well, you know, the X, X uh, aid or this aid, their, their story doesn't quite ring true. So what they're asking for is a full on new investigation, a, a, a quote unquote independent investigation that Attorney General Letitia James would have to step aside and they, they kind of want to start this process all over again. And, you know, we mentioned that we still haven't heard from the Judiciary Committee. Um, remember, the, the chairman of that committee promised a public report on what they found as they were investigating this at some point, you know, kind of simultaneous to the attorney general investigation. Um, is there any update on that? And if the public is actually going to see the findings of the Judiciary Committee, which, by the way, includes both Democrats and Republicans? Exactly. So that has been something that we've been waiting for for weeks and weeks. Remember, in mid-August, the Assembly Judiciary Committee were ready to start drafting articles of impeachment, which would have been completely historical. There's only been one sitting governor in the entire history of New York, way back in, I believe, 1916, I want to say, that was ever actually impeached. And so Governor Cuomo, if that were to happen, that would have been completely momentous. And But since then, they've said that they're no longer going to pursue articles of impeachment. Of course, the former governor resigned, but they said they were going to re re release a report, which was supposed to be, or is supposed to be multifaceted, dealing with the former administration's handling of the nursing home crisis, uh, the former governor's book deal, and of course, sexual harassment. Now, again, we've been waiting for these results, and when this report is going to come out is still a big question mark. It's still a big unknown. And some political insiders have speculated to me and, of course, another news outlet saying, well, perhaps this is why Rita Glavin and Cuomo have started to kind of up the ante a little bit. And also, you know, they're releasing these these messages and from from the former governor's campaign account his from his um, his campaign email to supporters saying, you know, this this attack or, or sorry this this um report did not give me a fair shake and 
it's just very interesting how it's two months later, we have not seen this report, but the attacks have started to come again as we start to get into the season of polling and what happens in 2022. Who is, who, will Kathy Hochul have a challenger on the Democratic side? And really quickly, Bernadette, we're under a minute left here. What's happening with the criminal probes of the governor? Right. So there are two that I have my eye on, but there are several. There's around five district attorneys across the state that after this report was released said they're going to pursue criminal investigations based on those results of the report. But in Albany County, you have a criminal complaint filed with the sheriff's office. And in conjunction with the Albany County District Attorney's Office, you have um, an investigation going on. And that one seems to be the most, I suppose, you know, hot button because Brittany Camisso, she is a current state worker, and she alleged that when the former governor invited her over to the mansion to help him out with a work situation, he allegedly groped her. And she is stuck by her story. At first, she was anonymous. Then she came out and put her name to the story. And this is something that investigators are still looking at. So that's, that's um, it remains to be seen what happens there. But it'll be very interesting if it, it turns out that some charges come. However, right now, the Albany County uh, Sheriff has said that they're looking at a misdemeanor, but it could be something more. Yeah, something definitely to keep following. Bernadette Hogan is a reporter with the New York Post and always kind to help us understand the goings on in Albany. Have a great evening, Bernadette. Thank you. Thanks, Bernadette, and thanks for watching the Town Hall. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 530. If you have a question or comment, that's our text line number. It's 849-2220.